Hey everyone, welcome back to Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we sit back, relax, take that midweek break, hello. talk about some of the fun things going on in the world of Linux, open source, anything else. I don't know how that became our intro, because that well, years and years ago, that was just me spitballing. I'm like, I need something to say at the beginning of the show, and that's what we've ended up with. My apologies <laughs> on behalf of Linux Gamecast. <laughs> so, a couple of things right out of the gate. I want to say... Um, I, I don't like giving fate this much leeway, Jill, because there's a lot of room for a lot of things to go wrong in uh-huh. between these two times. <laughs> but hopefully, if you've ever played around with gaming on Linux and you might, you know, you, you got Steam, option B has always been Lutris for everything else, your classic games, your non-Steam games, your God games. And um, Lutris is a very interesting piece of kit. Well, Valve sent the developer of Lutris, the Steam Deck, to play around with and see what he can get into. So he's going to be joining us Saturday and sharing his thoughts, uh, you know, just the Steam Deck in general and also, you know, what's going on with Lutris and the Steam Deck. So that's going to be fun to sit around and pick his brain meets about. Also, I was telling Jill in the Mm -hmm. pre-show and I was telling everyone on the live stream. You know, we do this live. Come hang out with us on uh, twitch.tv forward slash Linux Emcast. I was telling Jill about my fancy HDMI split in. Yeah. <laughs> Followed by like, <laughs> you know what? The next person that comes over to the house, like, hey, come look at this. I'm dragging him in the studio. And I'm going to say three fourths of the people, like, I didn't even know you had this. I'm like, I know, right? Um, talking about this room and uh, show off and try to pretend like it's the greatest thing in the world. It's not. <laughs> it's not. It's, it's just a, more than I would typically spend on an HDMI splitter that we need for the return video and the way everything works because the one that we've been using for the past four years which is the one on amazon sorted by price low to high i think maddie got it off her wish Uh, list has been just powered on plugged in running for four years and it's finally getting a little bit squirrely so we're, we're gonna swap it out with a industry standard sig one like the sig i'm using that our theron got um that i'm using right now which is a 4k but this one's like 1080p, but it does a, a bunch of extra features. I Hopefully, I will never have mm-hmm. to use. Where were you, Jill, last night? You bailed on us, man. What's up? Oh, no. I was actually, I'm I'm so sorry. I was bummed that I missed our Trackmania Stadium 2 practice yesterday. I actually was f- quite sick yesterday. I had an upset stomach. Couldn't, it was Hangover. having a hard time keeping food down. Crippling drug addiction. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Headache, everything. But today I am so much better. Um, But I am so happy that I did well in Trackmania on Friday in our time trials. So (laughs) I was happy about that. I came in third and fourth and fifth, which is really good for me. (laughs) It's all practice. It's all practice. I don't have any... um... Shock, because I can look at uh, who's been playing the longest during the week on each map. And I'm like, yeah, there yeah. we go. There's first place, second place, and third place. And I will put money on it each and every week. But <laughs> yeah. I try to keep things fun on Fridays when we do a rounds match. Because we have uh, Tuesday through Friday just to practice on the maps 24-7, servers open. Head over to the Track Manias in channel in our Discord that's got all the login information. All of that's updated if you have any questions about it there. And I should say it's cross-platform Linux, Windows, game consoles. People are playing on consoles as well. But... I like to throw in a little thing at the end because we play for free games. Top three places, you get a free mm-hmm. game. And you don't have to be the best. You don't have to be the fastest. You have to be the most consistent to get around the tracks. And this is silly arcade racing. I can't put the emphasis on that enough because mm-hmm. even if you don't play racing games or car- driving games, this is a whole different beast. This is Hot Wheels bouncing around, getting shot up into the air, you know, doing loop-de-loops and stuff like that. Yay. <laughs> it's just a silly, entertaining thing, and we don't take it too seriously. It's just an excuse to come hang out together, and we stream it as well. But um, seventh or eighth place, sometimes I might do it for fifth or sixth. I'll change it out because we do a points match. You know, you get more points the higher you are, and that's where the consistency comes in. If you're trying to get like a super low time, you might fly off the track and mm. you don't get any points. But I like to throw it in like seventh or eighth, maybe fifth this week. Instead of getting, you know, 20 points, 30 points, you end up getting... 500 points yeah that's happened to me last yeah. <laughs> last friday yeah so 300 points so you even if, <laughs> as long as you're trying and you're not dead last there's still a chance for you to mm-hmm. win and you can do some victory laps outside of that not a whole lot going on mm-hmm. i did have that 
uh, thing happen where you find something really neat. Like, oh, I can't wait to do a video on that. Oh, it's out of stock. I guess I'll reserve one. Then you go and order something else and <laughs> um, get the notification like less than 12 hours later. Hey, that thing that we said wasn't going to be in stock for a few months is in stock right now. And you're like, I already spent that money. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> Fun times. But eh, anyway, stay tuned for that. Maybe next month or month after that, uh, we will have a very interesting piece of equipment designed for live streamers and podcasters that I'm pretty sure is going to work out of the box on Linux now. Woohoo. <laughs> a lot of hardware this Yay. week, Jill. Yeah, I'm so excited. A lot of <laughs> <It's> hardware. The, <laughs> the hardest thing is going to be deciding what to buy first. <laughs> this week. <laughs> How about some software, though, to run on that new hardware? Yes. You know what? Why don't you try getting this up and running on <laughs> some of the stuff we're going to be talking about? That should be laughable. And you can, because Blender is very memory efficient. So our favorite open source and 3D computer graphics software, Blender, has just had an awesome new release, version 3.1. And there are so many new features, we won't be able to honestly cover them all. But one of the big, uh, big new features is Cycles now has a metal GPU backend, contribute, which is contributed by Apple, which takes advantage of hardware accelerated renders on Mac OS. And that's a really big deal. That's, that's showing you that, that this, the penetration of, of Blender, you know, is in the, is, is, is in the professional industry and uh, where they use all operating systems. So it, Blender needs to run on, on all the uh, popular OSs. And that was so cool that they did that. And there are also, gosh, there are so I many hate new node nodes. Based editing. Sorry, oh, I just had to that. Yes, I know you do. I know you do. But there are 19 new nodes, Ven, including an extrude node for extruding objects directly in the node editor, which is really, really awesome and efficient. And they have a new arc node for creating incomplete circles, which is really nice because a lot of the other um, high-end 3D animation packages have that function that I use a lot. <laughs> so I'm happy that Blender has it now. And they have a vertex neighbors node, which gives access to the number of vertices and faces connected to each ver vertex, which is very important when you're doing modeling. And especially if you need to model um, lower res uh, um, objects for say the gaming industry so that's very important and this version of Bren blender 3.1 also brings great performance in ge geometry nodes to the next level and many nodes are now multi-threaded and use less memory woohoo very very important and another big thing among hundreds of others, <laughs> is the ability to export OBG files. In, that's a lot faster, thanks to porting it. They, they ported .obg to C++. So that has a result of making the files a lot, lot quicker to export and save. A couple of things I was looking at this um, Blender. Um, I always state every time we talk about Blender, something I only use when I absolutely have to. And it's not because of node-based editing. It's just I'm not very good at stuff like that. And that's a big memory like, dump to get functional in Blender every single time. My brain immediately rejects all of that knowledge. Like, get that out of here. <laughs> but I was having a look because there's the Blender benchmark. And every time they do something like this, I want to download it and play around with it. And like, how fast? Show me some numbers. I can understand the numbers. <laughs> and um, yeah, that led me to the meta analytics for Blender which kind of challenged nice. some of my assumptions. Now, you know, they keep track of things. It's voluntary if you want to submit the data when you do the benchmarks. Uh, what CPU you're using, what GPU. And okay. So we're just taking a look at that. And of course, right there at the top, that's kind of what I would expect. AMD Epic, Threadripper. Mm -hmm. Then of course, people like have the Xeon Platinums are like, man, I wish we had gotten an Epic or a Threadripper because we paid a lot of money for this. But, and GPUs, again, pretty much what you would expect, right? NVIDIA, 3080s, mm -hmm. 3090s, A6000s. Where's an A4000? I want an A4000. NVIDIA, send me one, please. <laughs> but 
You look through that, and that's everything that you would Mm -hmm. expect. Uh, You know, NVIDIA stack all the way down. Not because, you know, everybody loves NVIDIA. No, that's not the case. It's just the right right tool for the job. It just is. What Mm -hmm. caught me off guard is living in a little Linux bubble. Like it's Blender, it's open source. I've been using this uh, since, you know, 2000, 2001. Um, it, it was like that scrappy little 3D modeler that ran under Linux and you could play around with it. And that was so cool. One day people were going to start using it. Well, looking at the meta analytics, uh, they have an operating system distribution, a breakdown from people who are running the benchmarks. And I'm like, you know what? I'm sure a couple of people, you know, I'm thinking like how many Windows users are running KD and live? I'm like, both of them. That's what I'm thinking about. <laughs> so looking at the, just the breakdown, um, Windows, off the top of my head, I'm like, you know, probably 30, 35%. I'm sure it's got some market share, some market share <laughs> in Windows. And, you know, maybe, maybe three people on Mac OS run it. And the rest of us, you know, we're just hammering out on Linux. My assumption has been challenged. <laughs> yeah, there we go. We look Windows. at this Pac-Man chart. <laughs> Three fourths. <laughs> easily. Easily yeah. <laughs> dominated by Windows. And Linux is in second place. Linux is in yeah. third place. More people on Mac OS. Um that that's kind of strange. Uh I mm-hmm. mean for me. I mean it's good. It's good because you can say, hey, we got some serious mainstream mass adoption of uh, open source software. Uh, that just means we can't use Blender anymore. Jill, it's too mainstream. We got to find something more obscure. Oh, to no. Get behind and Absolutely champion. not. <laughs> too many people are using it, man. That just means that it's made it, 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 it in you know, all, all facets of uh, computing. It's 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 made it in the big world. <laughs> we we got to use uh, something like less mainstream, like SolidWorks. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy, SolidWorks. Yes. <laughs> SolidWorks. So, itsy bitsy, teeny weeny, mini laptops filled with celery. Mm-hmm. There's nothing. Yes. Yeah, I, I couldn't make. Sell run rhyme with anything. That's good. <laughs> Talking about a J4125 and reasonably priced. Seven inches of moderate. I mean, it's not even seven inches of fury. This is a new crop of mini laptops with the seven inch displays and the little baby cell run processors. And they're kind of neat. I thought mm-hmm. I'd give it a mention because they're starting to show up everywhere. But um, I'm thinking about pro, you know mm-hmm. performance wise. These little guys are like slightly less than half the performance of a Ryzen 5 3600. So technically you can run some stuff on it, but don't expect too much. These units are showing up on AliExpress and all these other places. They're 1024 by 600 touchscreen air quotes display. It's got a headphone jack. It's got that going yeah, forward. It's got a headphone and it does have um, Intel HD graphics, <laughs> which is actually good you could actually play some games on it <laughs> and you know eight gigs of ram m.2 slot and it's going to run you about 300 dollars on the low end and you know what jill you want one right oh absolutely I've actually I, so much so that i have uh put this one and there's another one in eight which is at eight inches it's the chewy mini book and i've put those mini laptops in my aliexpress wish list actually a few months ago and i i've been very very close to to pulling the trigger on that one <laughs> on the seven inch one and because it's even smaller and cuter than my asus epc 701 which i have actually a couple of but i love those little mini laptops and i actually pulled out this one this is a very rare orange epc knockoff look at that color then <laughs> This was made in France. It's called the Lexibook laptop, and it's it's quite rare. So, <laughs> I've I've shown my EPC on the show a few times. So I decided to to bring out to pull out my very rare one. And this new seven inch laptop is smaller than my EPC. 
Yeah, wow. you got that big chunky Because there's thing. no bevel. <laughs> yeah, there's no bevel, hardly any bevel on the new one, <laughs> on the like, seven inch. At that price, you know, somewhere <laughs> around 300 bucks, I, I get a little bit curious. By the way, everyone, uh, where was this from? This was uh, a little at plug.com. All this is going to be in the show notes. And the reason I want to bring that up is I'm going to save you from clicking on whatever data scraping service Lilith Plug uses because I tried to put that in a link expander and the link expander is like, no, I'm not even messing with that. <laughs> so I'll have a link directly to AliExpress. And I was having a look. I mean, these are all yeah. the same things. Uh, you know, 320, 214, depending on what you're going for. But the ones that we are talking about with the um, 4125 CPU, yeah, I'm like 300 bucks, you know, eight gigs of RAM, yeah. touchscreen, seven inch. I mean, if someone gave me one, I would, I'd play around with it. I don't, ooh, what is this? Ooh, that's way too much. Never mind, but we are curious. Um, oh, the, the gaming one. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've seen that one, the, the One GX Pro. <laughs> yeah. It's got the paddles on either side of it. But look at how cute it is, Ben. You know what, Joe? I'm <laughs> going to scare somebody one day. I'm, we're going to be out shopping and like, we're going to pretend like it was 15 years ago where you were go to a physical store to buy a computer and I'll be like, yeah, I was thinking about getting that one, but you know what? Not cute enough. No, mm -mm, not cute enough. Not going to buy it. You know me. It's going to be cute. Um, yeah. <laughs> I love cute little laptops. I run all the things. <laughs> you know what? Like even the gaming, that thing was like 700 bucks, but something like that, I'd play around with it. I don't know exactly what you would. The problem, the problem with these are the same problem that well the same reason we don't carry on netbooks they're called tablets <laughs> yeah that's like, yeah you, do you do you want to pay three hundred keyboard on it <laughs> do you want to pay three hundred dollars for something with a smaller screen lower resolution um and less functionality or do you just want to buy a tablet yeah <laughs> and you know what some people want a small little tiny thing to play with but i don't know about like real usability but hey they're out there. Maybe you can do some, you know what? Buy one. You could probably run track mania on it. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Ven. I will do that. If I pick that one up. In fact, I am so close. The only reason I haven't pushed that buy button is that with AliExpress, I really, I haven't spent more than like, um, $200 from AliExpress. I'm always a little hesitant when you have, you spend. What is the most expensive? Yeah, a little okay, more than no, that. Well, you bring up a very, <laughs> very fair point. It's not necessarily <laughs> AliExpress itself. It's when you're ordering, you know, from any place like Internationally. that. Internationally. Internationally, yeah. the slow boat is, yeah. no, you might as well just say you're never going to be able to return it. So you better hope it works. Yeah, exactly. It's it. That's exactly it. I've bought uh, some GPUs from uh, um, AliExpress and have had very good luck with some good brands on there. So that is just the reality yeah. of like by the time you factor in like <laughs> packaging and shipping something back, and um, you're gonna it'll end up costing more than whatever you paid for it. So just do keep that in mind. Or you know what? Mm -hmm. Here's something I do: go to eBay. You'll find somebody who'll buy a crate of these things, and you'll end up paying. Four hundred dollars for it, but that extra hundred yeah. dollars means <laughs> True. that you can send it back if it's busted and it's probably been tested for it was shipped out. That is going to do it for our microcomputing segment. Until we get into some high-powered stuff, I wanted to share a little bit of good news with everyone because for some mm -hmm. reason, some reason, the Linux community we love ourselves some AMD. We just do. Yes, it, we do. We don't understand why, <laughs> and you know it, it's been a very, very difficult relationship with amd over the years because until recently i was throwing good money after bad you know right up until um even with the eight core bulldozer part i bought that was not a cheap chip and it was not the most <laughs> performant chip but i was not buying a desktop intel cpu this wasn't gonna happen i've been doing amd all the way from k5 up now that mm -hmm. we got ryzen's it's a different story. It's cool to have AMD now. That's what the kids are playing around with. You know, someone talks about building a gaming PC or a workstation. It's AMD. Yeah. Even on the low end, AMD's get you covered. Mm -hmm. The R3s, R5s is not an AMD commercial, by the way. <laughs> um, and if it is, AMD send me a throat rip. I need a new one. Uh, the <laughs> yes. <laughs> budget oriented stuff has been great. And that's what I want to talk about now. Um, if you were like first gen adopters and you got like the B350 series, 
for the original Ryzen's. You know, there was a people were kind of upset, a little bit upset, a little bit grumpy, because AMD said the AM4 socket's going to support everything for years to come. And they finally kind of hit a point with the latest Zen 3 stuff. I'm like, yeah, on, the, on like the B-series motherboards, the 300 mm-hmm. series, uh, just, you don't want to play that game. It's not going to be a good time. Some people were upset. However, you might be able to chill <laughs> out because AMD will support Ryzen 5000 CPUs on the 300 series motherboards, to which I will say, awesome. thank you, Intel. <laughs> that doesn't sound right. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> You, True. <laughs> this make no mistake. This is why you're seeing this because Intel has been very successful with their recent rollout of CPUs. They're more cost. You don't want to call them budget because it's Intel. They're still expensive, but budget oriented CPUs. AMD's like, man, we got to do something. And um, yeah, a, a future AGSA update. Uh, Five thousand CPUs will be supported in three hundred series motherboards, and I, that's assuming. That's assuming your motherboard mm. manufacturer wants to take the time and go, uh, you know, kind of update that that budget board from four years ago. You know, I wouldn't necessarily even recommend doing that, but I like I like options. You know, I feel better when I got options. Now I don't see. Now I have a B three fifty. Our entire audio stack. This thing over here. This entire setup is running on mm. an original Ryzen seventeen hundred B three fifty Tomahawk from MSI. I'm happy with it, but I wanted to upgrade it. I want to do, well, kind of side graded. I want to get rid of the 1700, which is a 1700 with a maths bug, which I'd never sent back oh, to get yeah, the replacement because right. yeah. it just worked. But I wanted to upgrade that mm-hmm. to a 3400G. And that's nice. the fastest, you know, integrated Vega, I think 10 GPU, APU that you can put in the board. But unfortunately, mm-hmm. you know, that's like the four year old parts, not in production anymore, and people are charging. Out the wazoo, especially too much. <laughs> since, you know, the pandemic thing went down and you couldn't buy a video card. Yeah. People are like, wait a minute, you can game on that kind of I'm like, yeah, you can. So those things have been going for like $250, $280. And I'm sitting here going, I'm not paying that much for that old thing. I'll just yeah. use what I have. So if you get uh, this just update, wait, wait a year. <laughs> if I <laughs> yeah, wait another year, it'll keep going up, though. Well, yeah, because you know what, not. you know what, Jill? Because then the Jills show up and they're like, ah, oh, vintage. <laughs> this is true. I'm going to add this it to my true. collection. You got, you got to catch it. at the, every, every, <laughs> Everyone knows that cycle in electronics. You got to get it right at that dip before it starts getting scarce. You really, really know this from like RAM. If you start rolling back to like, remember when um like DDR two got like it was you could just open a drawer and like shovel through ddr2 then it got crazy yeah. expensive DDR3 and then it that. got hard yeah. to get yeah <laughs> so you're going through that now this all hinges though because um you know if this is rolled out and again msi's got to do it asus has got to do it whoever else motherboard you happen to have it's not in their interest to go back and do this it's not they'd much rather you buy a new motherboard so it's going to be yeah. kind of pick and choose an AMD can force motherboard manufacturers not to do it. But AMD can be like, yo, you better do this or we're going to stiff you next time on something down the line. However, I'm not so sure. I mean, I'd love to be able to go out and buy, you know, for a few bucks more for like 300 bucks, I can get a Ryzen 7 5700G, which isn't supported on the motherboard, but it would be theoretically. But I don't know if I'd want to do it, though, because mm-hmm. you might end up with a situation, because we were talking about this in the pre-show. If you have MSI, you can't roll back by MSI. those updates. Yeah. So as reliable as MSI motherboards are, that is a critical flaw that you need to know about. You're not going to run into <laughs> that with like Asus and stuff <laughs> like that. Here's the thing. You might update the latest um, BIOS, and you get the new chip, and you put it in. And it's like, oh, it's a little bit squirrely. Then he's like, all right, fine, I'll just put the old chip back in with that new update. Then all of a sudden things are a little squirrely and you might not be able to roll it back. So keep that in mind. Um, Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know. What do you think, Jill? I mean, it's this, this could be cool if you wanted to hold on to that board just maybe for a couple yeah. of more years and not have to worry about getting DDR5 and PCI Express 4 is not something you're going to bother with for a while. Yeah. Well, I have an old uh, B350 laying around that I would definitely uh, try this on. You know, I think this is awesome and that AMD, you know, they've actually been so good about backwards compatibility on motherboards with their Ryzen processors. 
And that's good for us because it saves us money, especially for someone who can't afford to buy a new motherboard and upgrade, but they, they can get the new chip mm -hmm. <laughs> stick it in there. So that's very nice. Moral of the story Way is, to go, AMD. <laughs> this is great because it's going to tank the price of the 3400Gs because now they're not desirable anymore when you can just run out and buy a newer chip. And so I look forward to picking one up for yeah. 60 bucks in the upcoming months. There you go. I think that's what I picked up my mine for. I have that chip as well in one of my systems. <laughs> Good times ahead. So uh, we got to talk about some very, very overpowered Raspberry Pi like devices before we do that we want to thank everybody supporting the show over patreon.com forward slash linux gamecast i probably need to thank some extra people because i was kind of scrambling this oh, afternoon and i just okay. realized i didn't get that in the notes so what i'm going to do is like a real professional go back to last week's show notes from saturday okay I want look to thank at them yes hey no yes. i'm not doing that till how dare you accuse me of doing exactly what i'm doing um i want to think <laughs> Stein, who's a new patron. Stein. Stein. Yay. Um, and <laughs> Thomas Zed, who is a new executive producer, has bumped up to. We threw out a bunch Thank of bonus so sodas, much. a bunch of extra features. If you can help us out financially, that is a big thing. Keeps us from doing commercials. And that's neat. I like being able to do that. We're a. Joe calls it a network. I call it a hobby that's gotten out of hand. And <laughs> gotten out of hand. <laughs> yeah. No, no, that's kind of where we're at uh, that'll get you access to our discord if you like this this is just the middle of the show we have the live and uncut series which is the beginning middle and end in podcast format video format now in 1080p for the video watchers and um, mm -hmm. yeah it helps us do everything with the hosting and everything else uh, we're not out buying thread rippers we're out buying things like no hdmi <laughs> splitters to make this show better. yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's where we're at um Absolutely. it is kind of brilliant but yeah we'll get you access to our discord that's where the other six days of the week can hang out with us there we do have irc which is completely open always you gotta have irc for mm -hmm. doing a linux show i know mm -hmm. and uh, absolutely I, I i'm sure somebody outside right now is like have you heard of matrix <laughs> yeah <laughs> Well, LGC got their start on IRC. So that's where, when in the early years of Linux Gamecast Weekly, that's how I started uh, interacting with you guys. Oh, yeah. It was on IRC. We, we skip everything <laughs> in the middle. We, we, we're kind of in our IRC yeah. live chat is if you're typing in live right now and you're watching right now, IRC, Twitch, and Discord are all interconnected. So everybody can talk yeah, to each so other cool. during the live chat because we're not trying to lock anybody out of the community. If you can share the show, that's brilliant. Download, like, subscribe, all the fun stuff. Ring some bells. I love the sound of a bell in Absolutely. the morning. That is a lie. And thank I you. don't know what I would do if I yeah. woke up and heard a bell in the morning. Like, oh no, so oh. it begins. Are, are the angels coming, no. Ben? <laughs> no. I, I believe it would be a different class for me, Joe. <laughs> yeah, okay. I might have to grab my metal straw. Oh, I want to give a shout out to N. Maver for the resub today. Very uh -huh. nice. Thank you so much. She's in Thank our you. chat. <laughs> all of our lovely Twitch subscribers. That gets yeah, you access to like all of our all. past videos and stuff like that. And we do. If you just don't, if you just want to watch it on Twitch, there it is. And I have the thing enabled so you don't get ads if you're a Twitch sub. I assume that works. Who knows? Let me know. Now, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, sometimes you eat the whole pie. And there's one piece left. <laughs> ah, just one piece of pumpkin pie. But that's good enough to uh, satisfy your cravings. <laughs> How do you know that's so. pumpkin? You know what? I, I could probably it make looks something like with the same color and texture. That could be, I don't know, ham. Would mm. you like a nice slice of ham pie? No. Mm. Well, actually, yeah, like a pot pie. I could deal with that. <laughs> Like I could probably choke it down. I mean, sure, let's try it. I'm not going to turn it down. Exciting <laughs> stuff this week from the lovely, yeah. lovely people over at Pine64. And the Quartz Pro 64 is out. I want to thank Arthurian for dropping Ooh. this in our show notes. Um, yeah. If you want one of these, you get, you're going to need 300 bucks. So you're not going to be able to get that mini 7-inch um, uh, netbook. And you're also going to need a coupon because this is only available currently for developers. That's right. Mm -hmm. Developer only orders. How that's determined, I'm not sure. Show them your coupon and you'll find out. 
This is interesting for a couple of reasons. One, 16 gigs of RAM on board, 64 gigs of expandable eMMC. Now, powering this thing is a mm -hmm. quad-core A55 and a quad-core A76, clocked at 1.8, 2.4 respectively, big little, quad-core GPU mm -hmm. based on the new Valhalla architecture. Ah, this looks kind of neat. I'm down with this. Maybe I want this in my life. I'm not, I'm not sure. Uh, Jill, what, what would you do with one of these if it just kind of showed up? Oh, it'd be, um, I could use it instead of a Raspberry Pi. I could use it uh, as, as a nice SOC to do something fun with, like uh, host a uh, LAMP server. That would be cool. <laughs> a LAMP server? What are you, are you doing? Yeah, do you like or LAMP. You want to run a vintage web server? You're going to be running Apache? Yeah, you yeah Linux Apache, my SQL, or L Linux... Uh... A LAMP stack. That's how you know somebody's over the age of 40, by the way. Yeah, there you go. Or you it to... can be LAMP. It can be Nginx as well. Oh, yeah. It's back in my day, trust me, I, I say that as somebody over the age of 40. <laughs> Get off my lawn. Um yeah. <laughs> now, I, I did some looking around for this because, you know, like most of you at home, like, I don't want to wait to get this. I mean, I, I like that Pine64 is working on it. They want to get developers. They want to build this software ecosystem. I understand all that, but I mm -hmm. want it now. <laughs> so there's yeah, a problem. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Well, Pine64 says that the Quartz Pro 64 will honestly only be available public will publicly when their business service provider releases are in good shape mm -hmm. and uh, there's good stock and, and they can <laughs> they can get their uh, uh, part of their group in uh, Shenzhen, China, uh, working on it, which mm. will be a while because of pandemic. <laughs> I, I, I feel them on that. I feel them on that. Yeah. Or I could just go buy one right now for $249. How yeah, there you go. You found that. That was cool. <laughs> you could. Same thing. Um, the Rock Chip 3588 8K. We should mention 8K encode decode capabilities. Yeah, you get two Ethernet holes on the back of this thing, two HDMI display port, and the power. And you know, these aren't generally available. I and mean, you look at that, look at that picture. That's industrial design. When you got rack ears yeah, that built nice. into the side of things, like this thing is cool. meant to be screwed into a hole. There's a nice Nice shot of the motherboard. But, <laughs> um, you know, I'd recommend if you want something more consumer oriented, wait to find 64, let the software ecosystem get built up, ordered from them. They've been doing fantastic work. But mm -hmm. if you want to play with one of these, you can request a sample and a sample request uh, will run you $249 with shipping. And that'll take about seven days. That's not bad. Yeah. So, um, not if you bad at all. want one to play around with, uh, I mean, it comes up with a case, so it's got that going for it. I don't know. Ooh, I love the shiny blue metallic case. <laughs> Pretty. See? It, it passes Jill's cute test. I'm like, all right. Yeah, it does. It's like, it's not pink, it's blue, but you know what? I'll allow it. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you want something a bit more retro, though, Jill. Oh, absolutely. So this is something I've been dying to get my hands on. This is the DevTerm Kit R-01 from Clockwork Pi that you can build. The DevTerm is an open source portable terminal for every developer and us Linux nerds. <laughs> and it is an A5 sized notebook with a 6.8 inch ultra wide IPS screen and a Clockwork Pi mother mainboard. But what makes this dev term kit so special is that it has a Risk V processor and is the world's first 64 bit Risk V portable terminal. I want to know what's Yay. in the expansion port. That looks like a um, printer tape. A printer, yeah, a thermal printer. Isn't that cute? A little mini thermal printer. <laughs> uh, I got a lot of words. None of them would be cute, but continue. Oh, uh, <laughs> so this is actually really cool that uh, we're covering this again, the dev term, because back in November of uh, 2020 on LWW number 250, we actually talked about the dev term ARM 64 bit kits. But this is their their latest Grix 5. So cool. And you can actually buy this right now for $239. 
Good、mm. price, actually. And、um, on their website, they say it's actually fairly easy to put together. So you don't have to be necessarily elite hacker to put it together, which is nice. But Cl- Clockwork Pie does、uh, warn everyone, and they they state, please note. Dev, the dev term R dash zero one is highly ex, a highly experimental model and requires some experience with Linux systems and FOSS. We strongly recommend all beginners to choose other models. So yes, Ven, me and you will just be fine if we get this. <laughs> No, see, this is highly experimental. Most people don't realize, but highly experimental risk five architecture, which means that there's higher than a non-zero chance of that thing kicking down your back door and running out screeching into the night, never to be seen again. <laughs> this is a common problem. This is one of the dangers of risk five. But yeah, they、mm-hmm. they were basically telling you, man, like, hey, here's the hardware. If you can get it to boot, sweet. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, I know、uh, they've been heavily working on uh, the uh, putting the support in the Linux kernel, which it has had support for Risk Five for a while. I'm trying so, to figure out exactly what I would、yeah. do. I know most of you are <laughs> listening on the audio. This thing looks like、uh, like one of the old Tandy.、Um, Absolutely, it looks like looking like things with a you know rectangular screen.、Um, what is that? A couple inches. Yeah, like, it almost looks like a. a、uh, A classic、uh, word processor from back in the day, and you know,、uh, from from the eighties. <laughs> but it, but but it, or like you know a Commodore sixty four, but with the screen on it. It's really cool. Bitsy <laughs>、uh, bitsy.、Um, yeah,、Commodore、it's really、64. cute. Two speakers. It's got a <laughs> thermal printer, battery module, thirty two gig high speed at TF card with Clockwork OS. Maybe、uh, delivery time is approximately sixty days. So,、mm-hmm. yeah. Set it and forget it.、I、In mean, today's time, that's that's a good estimate, I guess. That's not too bad <laughs> from the、um, slow boat from China. Two hundred and thirty nine dollars. Clockworkpie dot com, and that、uh, you know at two hundred and thirty nine dollars, that is well within the like yeah, pick one up, play with price. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah.、No. After I get my Steam Deck, I'm either gonna pick up a Dev Term first or the little seven-inch laptop we talked about. <laughs> Those are both on my list of things to buy. <laughs> Sounds pretty decent, Joe. We gotta bounce out of here. I want to thank everybody for tuning in live, listening to us, watching us after the fact. And、um, there was oh right, if you want to send in an email, you got some thoughts, hints, allegations, things about it left unsaid. You can do that by hitting.、Mm-hmm. Drop a comment in the YouTube video, or just head over to Linux Teamcast, smash that contact button, and that way it gets directly to us, and we can get back、yeah. to you. And your comment,、yeah. thought, hint, allegation might appear on to not tomorrow's show. There will not going to be a show tomorrow. That'd be weird. Next week's show. <laughs> Yeah, next week's show.、Uh, tell us、uh, if you get a dev term.、Uh, tell us how you got Linux working on it and what distro you used.、Put、Give us、Windows、all the details.、It. Yeah. No, 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 no. I, it I, would have well Windows three point one, but with no risk support. I could put, <laughs> but you could QMU. You could run it in QMU. You can do QMU emulation you can, you on Linux. Put the、uh, what is the open source Windows thing called?、Uh, come on, Chad, help me out. The 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 um, I, I'm spacing. Jill's、two. gonna say、um, it was on the tip of her tongue. React OS. <laughs> Yeah, React OS,、um, or you could put see if you can get Plan Nine to run on it. <laughs> There's old school. Who wants to do Plan Nine, man? That's for the new people. I run Plan Four. Oh, Plan Nine is actually very progressive for its time. <laughs> all right, everyone. <laughs> bye bye. Bye, everyone. Love you all. Thank you so much to everyone in chat for、DOS. contributing to the show. Hey, you could put free DOS. Yeah, DOS. Yeah, free DOS. Absolutely. Thank you to Arthurin again, to Kresny, Mr. Alert, and Fox Dog. Cryptics in the house. Mir PPC. Yay, Steve Husband, Don M, Beastwick, to Kresny. We love you all. Thank you for joining us in our live chat, and thank you all to our wonderful patrons who contribute. Wrong episode number. Lots of their hard-earned money. I know. Save me that email. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just noticed that. It is LWW number 318. Well, that's what it says up there, Jill. 318. Yes. <laughs> yes, this is true. You got it. You got it right in one spot. <laughs> so I, it's okay, Ben. <laughs> Jill just noticed it. The first time it yes. showed up. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I think there's a connection. <laughs> All right, everyone. See you next week. Bye, everyone. Love you.